I think one of the other things uh, that we have been, I think, thinking about and fleshing out in our time together as a staff and our work um, is, you know, the kind of the trajectory of things. And, you know, for the last uh, three, you know, three years, we've been working towards being an anti-racist institution. Uh, since last June, we have had our uh, grant from the Calvin Institute of Worship to help on, on dealing with worship itself. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, you know, our, our work in uh, being an anti-racist institution doesn't stop when you retire, it continues. Absolutely. And one of the things that we have been processing and thinking as a staff is, um, you know, um, the, the, the tendencies um, that communities have once um, change happens to go back into some old habits. Mm -hmm. And um, when we were working with Coffee Carrasco, our um, kind of liaison in this process, we, we went through a particular uh, scripture and passage, and it was the, the numbers, uh, numbers passage. If you give me a second to pull it up, um, I think we can mm -hmm. kind of talk yeah. about that yeah. real quick. It's in Numbers you have it. 13, uh, and it's verses 26 to the end, and it goes into... Um, chapter 14, uh, one through four. And I'm just briefly, uh, I'll read it real quick so that people have like, you know, we're not just making this up. <laughs> they came back to Moses and Aaron and the whole Israelite community at Kadesh in the desert of Paran. Uh, there they reported to them and to the whole assembly and showed them the fruit of the land. They gave Moses this account. We went into the land to show you which you sent us, and it does flow of milk and honey. Here it is, fruit. But the people who live there are powerful, and the cities are fortified and large. We even saw descendants of Anak there. The, uh, the Amalekites live there in the Negev, and the Hittites, the Jebusites, the Amorites in the hill country, and the Canaanites live near the sea and along the Jordan. And Caleb silenced the people before Moses and said, We should go up and take possession of the land, for we can certainly do it. But the men who had gone up with him said, We can't attack those people. They are stronger than we are. And there spread among the Israelites a bad report about the land they had explored. They said, The land we explored devours those living in it. All the people we saw there are of great size. We saw the Nephilim there, the descendants of Anak and, and from Nephilim. We, we seem like grasshoppers in their own eyes, and we look the same to them. Chapter 14. The night all the members of the community raised their voices and wept out loud. All Israelites grumbled against Moses and Aaron, and the whole assembly said to them, If we only had died in Egypt in the wilderness, why is the Lord bringing us to this land only to let us fall by the sword? Our wives and children will be taken and plundered. Wouldn't it be better for us to go to Egypt? They said to each other, we should go back, choose a leader, and go back to Egypt. Mm -hmm. And so we, we've been talking about the tendencies when things don't look exactly safe or don't look um, like it may be possible to revert towards mm -hmm. some old habits. Mm -hmm. um, and so... You know, one of the things that we have helped the community understand is that when, when we're trying to uh, move towards moving from white normative values to transforming values, uh, we don't want to move backwards. Um, so, you know, we've, we've named them mm -hmm. um, scarcity, um, secrecy, secrecy, either or thinking, competitive, competitive com competition, competition mm -hmm. the drive to dominate. Mm -hmm. Um, and we want to act in ways that talk about collaboration, abundance mm -hmm. thinking. Um, and so how do we remind people that in this transition, mm -hmm. we're not, not to go back to a place where they think it's comfortable? Mm -hmm. Yeah. One of them that really I think has jumped out um, in terms of those values is the mindset of scarcity 
and the mindset of abundance, right? Really just very different approaches. And the scarcity mindset is like, well, there's only a limited amount and, you know, we, we need this. If, if I, I need this, but if you have it, then I can't have it. So the pie is limited, right? Mm -hmm. Abundance is we have what we need. You know, there is enough. You know, God provides enough. And um, I, I think about this one, like we've talked about this in the elders, um, in the elders group. And uh, one of them expressed like when they heard the announcement that I was retiring, like the immediate thing was scarcity. Mm -hmm. or like, oh, we're going to be without, right? Mm -hmm. And where will we get, you know, another pastor and blah, blah, blah. But then kind of worked through that to coming more to a place of abundance. But I think it is sort of natural, mm -hmm. right? If, if somebody goes away to think we are less. Mm -hmm. And so just to remind ourselves, right? There, are, there it is a big, amazing world um, that um, where God provides what is needed and there, there are leaders and there will be a really excellent leader yeah. um, for Central yeah. uh, for the years going forward. I think the ones that drive, uh, the ones that stick out to me is the drive to dominate instead of um, uh, collaborative cooperation, mm -hmm. right? Um, and so the tendency to uh, be like task oriented, mm. right? we just got to get this done, move, 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 and you push, push mm -hmm. to, so that we can get to a place where we have someone new. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the collaborative cooperation understands that this is a, a, a long, it could be a long-term process. Mm -hmm. And many voices mm -hmm. will have a say to be a part of what's happening uh, and choosing who's the next person. Um, I think that is kind of the value um, we lead into in this time mm -hmm. and not go backwards and saying, hiring a new pastor is not a task-oriented work. I know there are mm -hmm. tasks for us to do, sure. um, but it's really about um, thinking about our future, dreaming about our future, um, the world that we're stepping into, and who's going to help us in that process, who's going to lead us during those particular times. Um, so. I think, too, about um, the, the value set of secrecy and transparency. You talked a little bit about transparency and and um, how, you know, specifically like the search committee is already sharing information and will continue to share information. I think that's another one that like, if, if we feel kind of insecure or unsure, it's easy to get into the mindset of like, I don't know what's going on. Somebody else is doing it. There's a lack of information. And um, yeah, just to, to lean into the transparency all, on all parts, right? Mm -hmm. If if I feel like there's some secrets, just ask, you know, talk to somebody. Yeah. Um, and then on the part of those who are more involved, just to keep communicating, yeah. um, you know, over and over. It's, it, it, again, we sometimes think, well, we've said it, yeah. or we put it in the newsletter, so people know, but just to keep on um, communicating uh, in a transparent way, it's, yeah. it's gonna help. <laughs>